Welcome to Episode 1 of the Risk Assessment Video Series. Kellerman Consulting releases weekly training videos and important tips and strategies to help companies keep up to date with the latest food safety regulations. I'm Jamie Miller, Registered SQF Consultant at Kellerman Consulting. In this episode, I am going to discuss some examples of risk assessment and risk management in our daily lives and how to perform risk assessment and risk management in a food facility. Throughout this series, you will learn different formatting options for risk assessments, where risk assessment is required as part of the food safety and quality activities, and how they are used in GFSI programs. I will also address where risk assessments may be useful for business decisions, the employees who should participate in risk assessments in the facility, and how risk assessments are reviewed and updated based on scheduling and changing circumstances. Additionally, we will review sources of information you can use to support the risk levels you assess. Risk has two components, likelihood or probability, and severity. Likelihood or probability refers to how possible it is for an adverse event to happen, while severity refers to how bad that thing actually will be. Each of these components are equally important when determining the overall risk of an event or action. Adverse events are a major risk, but if it is not likely to happen, we don't need to prior prioritize preparing for it. Think of being hit by a lightning strike tomorrow. It could happen, and the consequences could be severe, but the chances are small, and it likely won't stop us from going outside. On the other hand, something that is very likely to happen, but likely would not have severe consequences, may not require planning. And here we can think of a light bulb burning out in our house. It almost definitely will happen, but when it does, the consequences aren't too bad and we can easily replace the bulb without the brief lack of lighting causing any issues. Because many businesses and business leaders are either unaware or disinterested in assessing risk of operations, risk assessment and risk management are infrequently performed in food businesses. When they are performed, it is often informal and just an understood practice for employees. There are requirements to perform risk assessments and to have them documented for evaluation by regulators or auditors. This can be a source of conflict during an audit due to how different people interpret this requirement. As we dive deeper into defining risks and how to properly document those risks, we are hopeful that it will help start the process of thinking about risks in your facility and will also help you pre prepare those risk assessments in case a government inspector or auditor asks to see your risk assessments. As an exercise to prepare you to write risk assessments in a food manufacturing facility, Let's first begin by reviewing risk management in our day-to-day -day lives. Since all actions and interactions each day have unknown results and consequences, everything we do in our daily lives carries risk. While there is no need to formally assess and manage that risk, you may find yourself assessing risk without even realizing it, whether it's gonna be going to the grocery store, sending a text message, making a career change, or going on vacation. We live in a society in which most people are free to assess and manage risk how they see fit in their day-to-day -day lives. That may be in the foods we eat, the substances we consume, the places we live, the people we associate with, how we acquire and spend money, and so on. As a function of our freedom, some people engage in all manner of risky behavior without any concern for the risk they take. Others take on behaviors of extreme risk aversion where risk is not apparent to others. It's up to each person and the consequences of how risk is confronted is confined to them and those closest to them. We may read articles on the internet, consult with experts, or trust our instincts when confronted with taking risk, but there are very few rules or documents the average person uses when it comes to addressing risk. Beyond that, whether there is a risk and how big the risk exists is often a source of disagreement between people in our social lives, families, and business lives. Let's take a quick look 
at an easy example of varying degrees of risk, how people drive their cars. Driving is inherently dangerous. With each driver operating heavy machinery at high speeds, tens of thousands of people die in automobile accidents each year. And in fact, being in a car is one of the most dangerous activities we do each day. And yet this very dangerous behavior is seemingly commonplace enough that most drivers do not treat it as dangerous at all. So think about what motivates you as you are driving. If you think of yourself as a really good driver who can handle driving fast, you might not care about signaling lane changes and you easily get annoyed by slower drivers and tailgate to get them to move so you can keep the speed you are comfortable with. In all likelihood, you do that because you don't think you're going to get into an accident at a high speed, or if you do, it won't be that big of a deal. If you do think you might get hurt or that an accident would be a big deal and you still drive very aggressively, then the assessment of risk isn't there. So who is correct, the risky driver or the cautious driver? The truth is both and neither are correct. Conditions constantly change on the roads and we cannot control other, other drivers. So driving aggressively may sometimes keep us safe and other times being cautious may be the correct approach. Most of the time, the approaches we take to manage risk fail once when they've worked hundreds or thousands of times before. In comparison to driving, Airplane travel causes a considerable amount of fear and aversion from people based on the sense that something bad may happen during flights, even though there are a minimal amount of issues each year associated with air travel, and there are significantly less fatal incidents associated with air travel compared to traveling by car. Because risk is always present in our lives, and because we aren't accustomed to actually measuring risk or writing down how we intend to address that risk in a normal circumstance, it can pose a big challenge for food facilities that are required to identify, assess, and manage risk as part of the food safety program. Each of our clients have a sense of how risky their operations are and what is likely to go wrong, but often they don't know where there must be a formal risk assessment or how to go about creating a risk assessment or management statement. In our next episode, we are going to look at these issues where you need a risk assessment for regulatory compliance and how leadership can make sure risk assessments are accurate for the facility and kept up to date as circumstances change. To learn more, visit our website and you'll find a full library of food safety training videos and resources. Follow us on LinkedIn and click the bell to be notified of new resources as they are released each week.